The first point to make about such distinctions is that they do not, in fact, describe different art forms so much as different approaches to art forms, different ways of framing the aesthetic experience, different assumptions about what is artistically valuable or meaningful. The 19th century argument that art, that art was timeless meant then an attempt to objectify all, all art, the performing arts, arts too. One effect was to redefine music as a musical object, to put the analytic emphasis on the work, the score, rather than on its performance. And given that to be music, the score had to be performed. The performance itself was also objectified made the object of repeated performance such that the tradition, the history of performance could be claimed as defining music, defining music's meaning rather than the immediate effect which was by its nature inevitably distorted by social, historical and mat material ex exigencies exigencies. This process of objectification was also a process of academization. Hence, eventually, Milton Babbitt, as art became an object of study and scholars became guardians of its traditional meaning, as they had always been in matters of religion and law. Here, too, The emphasis was by, necess by necessity, the necessity of what can be stored and thought, and, and thought on the qualities of a work in space, structural qualities, rather than on the qualities of a work in time, the qualities of immediacy, emotion, sweet, sweat, suspect, sus suspect terms in both the library and the classroom. I should be stressed too, though, that what I'm describing here is a discursive process, an idealistic attempt to grasp, to grasp an experience through a particular evaluative framework, which was not, and perhaps could, could not be entirely successful. In the end, how people, or rather critics and scholars, ch talked about be music became detached from how people, musicians and listeners felt, felt about it. There was always an excess in musical experience, something unreasonable, something, something that got away. And if it is relatively easy to illustrate the problems of treating temporal arts in special terms. Analysis, a score or a play script is not, in the end, to treat the experience of music or drama. It is just an important to note that the special arts also have temporal elements. We do, after all, experience books in time Poems too, have, poems too have a beginning, a middle and the, an, an end. Reading is a process and, and an emotional process at all. At that, oratory is an aspect of the fine art experience too. The linking concepts here is narrative, structured time, temporal space. If narrative gives the fine arts their dynamism if gives the performing arts their structure musical pleasure is also a narrative pleasure even when the music it is music is at its most abstract compare gregor greg sandos response to milton babbitt cited earlier to greg state's appreciation of cecil taylor Someone once, someone, someone once said that while Coleman Hawkins gave the jazz saxophone a voice, Lester Young uh, thought, thought, 
taught it how to tell a story. That is, the art of personal confession is one jazz musician uh, must is one jazz musician must master before they can do justice by their tradition. I could relate. I couldn't. I couldn't relate to Cecil's music until I learned to hear the story. He was shaping, shaping out of both black tradition and his complex life as an American Negro. For Tate, as for other jazz writers, the story in music describes an entanglement of aesthetics and ethics. Such a narrative is necessary to any claim that art has something to do with life. A good jazz performance, that is, that is to say, like any good music, musical performance, depends on rhetorical truth or the music, on the musician's ability to convince and pers persuade, persuade the listener that, that what they are saying matters. This is not a matter of representation on imitation or ideology, but draws rather on the African-American tradition of signifying. It puts into play an emotion effect, a con collusion between the, perform the performer and an audience which is engaged rather than detached, knowing rather than, uh, knowing rather than knowledgeable. This is the reason why popular music, why I don't believe the argument is confined to African derived forms. Th uh, thought it does help to explain the remarkable global impact. Must be understood not to represent values, but the embodied term, but the but to embody them. The point is well made in Christopher Wait. Waterman's study of Juju. Juju's history suggests that the role of musical style in the enactment of identity makes, makes it not merely a reflexive but also potentially constitutive factor in the patterning, patterning of cultural values and social inter interaction. Yoruba musicians responding creatively to changes in the Nigerian political economy fashioned a mode of expression that enacted in music, language and behavior, a syncretic metaphoric image of an ideal social order, cosmopolitan yet firmly rooted in autochthonous, autochthonous tradition. This dynamic style configuration, consonant with Yoruba ideologies of the open hierarchy as an ideal pattern of aesthetic and social organization, allowed Juju performance to play a role in the stereotypic reproduction of deep Yoruba values during a period of pervasive economic and political change. This echoes, echoes Paul Gilroy's comment on the ways in which in the history of black culture, the politics of transfiguration strives in pursuit of the sublime, struggling to repeat the unrepeatable, to present the unpresentable. If the politics of fulfillment in pursuit of rational Western politics, seeks to assimilate the semiotic, verbal, and textual, the politics of transfiguration pushes toward the mimetic, dramatic, and performative. Hence, the traditions of, perform of performance that continue to characterize the production and reception of African diaspora musics. Jill Ra notes that The power of music is in developing our, our struggles by communicating information, organizing consciousness and testing out, deploying or amplifying the forms of subjectivity which are required by political agency, individual and collective, defensive and transforma transformational demands attention to both the formal attributes of this tradition 
of expression and its distinctive moral basis in the simplest possible terms by posing the world as a, as it is against the world as the ready racially sub subordinated will like to will like it to be this musical culture supplies a great deal of the courage required to go on living in the present Gil Ra does suggest that the history of black, black music enables us to trace something of the means through which the unity of ethics and politics has been reproduced as a form of folk knowledge. And if music does wake, conjure up and, and, and enact the new mo modes of friendship, happiness and solidarity that are consequent on that are consequent on the overcoming of the racial oppression on which modernity and the duality of rational Western progress as, as, as excessive bar barbarity relied. It also conjures up the enact, enact dialogue, argument, call and response, lines between self and other are blurred, and special forms of pleasure are created as a result. Gilroy quote Ralph Ellison on jazz. There is, there is in this in this a cruel contradiction implicit in the art of, in the art form itself. For true jazz is an art of individual assertion within and against the group. Each true jazz moment springs from a contest contest, in which the artist challenged all the rest. Each solo fly or improvisation represents like the canvases of a painter, a definition of his identity and individual as member of the collectivity and as a link in the chain of tradition. Thus because jazz finds every life in improvisation upon traditional materials, the jazz man must lose his identity even as he finds it. But while music is thus particularly important in the complex history of black identities, this use of music as that static process through which we discover ourselves by forging our relation to others is not confined to, confined to black cultures. In Britain, for example, while listeners have, have long been engaged in their own enactments of black musical values, check Brian Jackson's uh, 1960s description of the importance of the Huddersfield Jazz, Huddersfield, Huddersfield Jazz Club to its displaced working class grammar school girls and boys. In the life of New Orleans has a If the life of New Orleans has an in exaggerated image of working class life, the stimulating generalized emotions of jazz were uh, has the image of what the world of art could offer. Jackson knows the importance of the jazz solo for these self-conscious individualists as they struggle to make music for themselves. Solos in which no no one else is in the club even feigned, feigned interest. But he also notes how jazz was used in Huddersfield in, as a musical practice in which, to, in which to stage an understanding of collectivity. If didn't lead to social promotion or to high art, there was no transfer at all from jazz to classical music. Its function was to hold together and sustain a steady stream of post-1944 act pupils. As a floating community, it became admirably and intrig intrigately designed for, for, a, for that purpose. And the feeling of how to do this, to do this was the real inheritance from working class Huddersfield to, to turn to a different world altogether Philip Bowman explores the role of chamber music another form of small scale making music together 
in shaping German Jewish identity in, in Israel, in both articulating cultural values and enacting collective commitment to them from the audience as much as for as from performer as from perf the performers. In this context, the scored basis of absolute music was an et as et ethically binding as the improvised basis of jazz. Viewed from a performative perspective, the absence of specific meaning within the text allows meaning to accrue only upon performance, thus empowering any group, for example, an ethnic community, to shape what it will from absolute music. The gap, be the gap, be therefore, form the gap therefore forms between the context of chamber music. Rep repertoires and the style of performance situations it is within music or it is within the mutability allowed by style that differences in meaning and function of music arise thereby transforming chamber music into a gen genre that can follow numerous historical paths these paths may be a different as different as, say, the ethnic associations in Israel and the practices of amateur music making found in many American academy communities. Clearly, such cases reflect different attitudes toward both the repertoires of chamber music and the communities that lend the music its distinctive, func distinctive functions and form it inform its different histories histori from aesthetics to ethics underlying all the other distinctions critics continue to draw between serious european derived and popular african derived music is an assumption about the sources of of musical value serious music it seems matters because It transcends it, it transcend social forces. Popular music is aesthetically unin uninteresting because it is determined by them, because it is functional or utilitarian. The sociological approach to musical value has thus meet, mean uncovering the social forces, cancel it, conceal it in the talk of transcendent values. The populist reversal of the high-low hierarchy has meant praising the functional and the at the expense of the aesthetic. My concern is the, the, the opposite, to take seriously the aesthetic value, the aesthetic function, as one might say, of all music's popular music too. The sociologies of contemporary popular music is faced with a body of songs records, st stars and styles which exist because of a series of de decisions made by both producers and consumers about what is good. Musicians write tunes and play solos and program computers. Producers choose from different mixes. Record companies and radio and television programmers decide what will, what will be released and play it. Consumers buy one, one record rather than another and concentrate their attention on particular genres. The result of all these apparently individual decision, decisions is certainly a pattern of success, taste and style which can be explained sociologically, but it is also a pattern that is rooted in individual judgment. We can... We can, as I suggested, er, uh, we can, as I suggested earlier, trace such judgments back to material conditions easily enough by way, for example, of Pierre Bourdieu's concept of taste. We can point to the cultural capital embedded in technique and technology. People produce and consume the music they are capable of producing and consuming. Different social groups possess different sorts of knowledge and skill, share different cultural histories, and so make music differently. 
musical tastes to do correlate with class cultures and subcultures. Musical styles are linked to specific age groups. We can take for granted the connections of ethnicity and sound. This is the sociological common sense of rock criticism and the idea of authenticity.